I had this boy in my life at one point. He was, he was here. Alex was a fun, fun, caring, loving son. To friends, he was loyal. When he first went missing, it's a part of you that thinks, oh, he's going to come home. As it got over five years, and it's, come, and it's got to the tenth, you just know. You just, well, I just know something was terribly wrong for Alex not to be here. He's got no reasons not to ever be at home. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Solvable Mysteries podcast. My name is Juras, and you may have noticed that the podcast has skipped a week last week. That's because of uh, certain situations that went down in the background. I'm currently running the show on my own, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess this brings new challenges but also brings new benefits so i'm actually very excited to see how this episode will go i have not i don't have a clear let's put it um vision for this structure so i have like a rough idea how i want to run this episode this is kind of i guess the pilot episode of me trying to do it alone and um i'm excited to bring you a case this week that i actually like, I'm very shocked and surprised where the research took me this week. So we're going to be talking about the Alex Slowly uh, disappearance. And this is an English case, a case from the UK. Uh, I want to quickly read my um, introduction as always. And then I'll jump into the details that I found very interesting this week. Alex Slowly is an English student who disappeared without a trace in Edmonton, North London, England on August 2nd, 2008. At the time of his disappearance, Alex was 16 years of age. He was described as a 5 foot 5 in height, light-skinned black youth with striking blue eyes. Alex had black hair and a slim physique. Some sources stated that he looked younger than his actual age. Alex was also known by his nickname Gog, most likely given to him due to him wearing eyeglasses. A notable characteristic of Alex slowly is that he was good at math and he had hoped to become an accountant. Wikipedia states that, quote, Alex slowly was described as someone who dressed smartly and was not scruffy. His mother, Nerissa TV, stated, quote, he was quite a slick dresser, my son. He wasn't scruffy, end quote. Alex liked football, and eating traditional West Indian food such as fried plantain, dumplings, and porridge. As I understood, his parents were separated at the time of his disappearance. Alex also had three sisters, Tasha, Tazra, and Latina. Unfortunately, Alex's father, Christopher, died in 2014 without finding out what had happened to his son. When he disappeared, Alex was a student and was about to start his accountancy course at the City and Islington College. To me, this is an interesting study arrangement as he was only 16 years of age. I also found an article on the Islington Tribune website from September 25th of 2009. In this article, it is stated that Alex was an accountancy student. When I looked at the city and Islington College, I've determined that the accounting classes were taking place at the Center for Lifelong Learning, uh, Fisbury Park. I'm guessing this is where Alex was going to be studying. Um, this article also stated that sometime before he disappeared, Alex had been stopped by police after driving a vehicle underage and was due to go to court. Now, according to the Westminster Extra news article, Alex had, quote, 
come to the attention, end quote, of the police before he went missing on July 11th, 2008, but police said there was nothing to suggest this was linked to the actual disappearance. Um, on the other hand, his mother said that Alex wasn't into drugs or gangs as far as she knew, and this is important because this is going to play a big role, guys, and she also said that if he was on the run from the police, he would have contacted his family by now. Another thing worth mentioning is that at the time of his disappearance, Alex was just two days away from his 17th birthday and he was staying at a friend's house in Edmonton, North London. Now, later on the podcast, I'll bring up some interesting findings regarding this because this is just the basic general info from the Wikipedia. Also, um, I'm not really sure how long Alex was staying at this friend's house, but from one source, I've kind of got the sense that he was potentially staying at that friend's house for a month. This wasn't like a sleepover type of a situation, as the Wikipedia and the general articles in this case may have you believing. Now, Alex left his friend's house around noon on the 2nd of August in order to return home for his birthday, but he never arrived home and hence he's been missing now. Alex had only little money with him and he did not have any other clothes apart from the ones he was already wearing. He also did not have a passport with him, however, he did have a mobile phone, but it stopped connecting when he went missing, whatever that means. London's Metropolitan Police found nothing to indicate where Alex may have gone. An officer back in 2012 stated, quote, It's like he disappeared off the face of the planet. End quote. No trace of Alex was ever recovered from CCTV footage. Uh, while researching Alex Slowly's case, I ran into a video on YouTube posted by a channel called Murder Analyzed, and the lady running the channel believed that London's police did not fully commit to looking through the entire CCTV footage available when they were searching for Alex as it would be too cumbersome for them to do this. And this got me thinking, and I generally agree with her, even though I don't really know the amount of CCTV footage that um, police would have to investigate. The woman running the channel, uh, Murder Analyzed on YouTube, is quite annoying. She keeps repeating the same things over she and over again, so I don't I suggest anyone checking out here. her content. Just a quick disclaimer. Years. In September of 2009, over a year after his disappearance, a possible sighting was reported in Ilford, East London, but has never been confirmed. It's important to mention that Alex had friends in Ilford, so the sighting wouldn't be completely random. In October of 2009, the charity called Missing People and the supermarket chain called Iceland arranged for Alex Slowly's story as well as his photo to appear on milk cartons. Alex was one of the first cases to be published in such a manner, and he was featured on nearly 13.5 million milk cartons. Now, I've tried looking for these milk cartons with Alex picture on them. I couldn't find anything online. It would be interesting to see uh, which picture they used. An interesting revelation came in July of 2015 when Alex's mother, Nerissa Tivi, was surprised to learn that police have received numerous reports of sightings back in 2009. Nerissa herself stated that she had met with police a number of times and they had never told her about these possible sightings back in 2009. A potential connection between Alex Slowly's case and the disappearance of Andrew Gosden was proposed back in September of 2017 when retired head of Metropolitan Police Central Images Unit Mick Neville drew comparisons between the two disappearances. Now, he stated, quote, it raises the question on 
whether there is a serial killer on the prowl. The potential link between these cases need to be recognized. End quote. Now, some of you guys will remember that um, this channel has covered Andrew Gosden's case um, back last year, I believe. Alex and Andrew had some similarities, such as them both being excellent math students who disappeared without a trace in London. Andrew Gosden was 14 years of age when he disappeared on the 14th of September 2007. This was less than a year before Alex went missing. Andrew Gosden's last known location was King's Cross Railway Station, and when Alex slowly disappeared, he was thought to have been on his way to Islington, which is just around two miles away from King's Cross Station. Now, in September of 2019, the Metropolitan Police released an updated age-progressed EFIT depicting Alex slowly as he may have looked at the time. It was reported that there had been no use of Alex's national insurance, his bank account or passport in the many years since he's been missing. Also in September of 2019, Detective Constable Tom Boom of the missing persons unit stated that, quote, there was no evidence of harm, but the case had gone cold and there were no major leads. The hope is he is safe and well and somehow has managed to stay off the radar in terms of using bank accounts, passports, that sort of thing, end quote. Nerissa Tiv, Alex's mother, stated, quote, there's no closure to this and with all the appeals and knowing your child would not just run away, you just start thinking something terrible must have happened to him, end quote. At the time of this recording, Alex slowly has been missing for over 13 years. If he's still alive, he is now 29 years of age. All right, so jumping back to the map, right, because I wanted to definitely highlight a few key, key area points because I know that most of the audience members might not be familiar with uh, London uh, all that much. So I uh, really quickly want to highlight, this is Edmonton. This is the area where uh, Alex was, according to, a few, to one source on, on Reddit, was staying at for up to a month, actually. Um, now... If we will zoom in to the Islington area, this is the general Islington area right here. And uh, we can see that this right here is the general location where Alex's mother uh, was living at. So prior to him, I guess, apparently moving out and living in Edmonton, he was living in this location right here. This is the school, Arts and Media School of Islington. This is, I guess, some sort of a high school that Alex had previously uh, completed. And this was the university, the City and Islington College Center for Lifelong Learning. This is actually the university where uh, he would begin his accounting studies. Uh, that never happened, of course, because, you know, he vanished in August, right? And... Um, the studies would begin in September, I believe. Uh, this is King's Cross Railway Station right here. And some of you might be familiar with this location because this is exactly where Andrew Gosden was last seen. So if we're going to be thinking uh, about a potential connection between the two cases, we would probably like to see the distance as the crow flies between... King's Cross Railway Station and the place where allegedly Alex was heading to? Because if he was living for a month in Edmonton, do we know for a fact that he was coming back home? Maybe he was just coming back home for the birthday party that was apparently going to be take 
going to take place within two days of his disappearance, um, we can see that as the crow flies, the King Cross railway station is around three miles away. So from the general neighborhood and I don't know, I mean, that still seems like a fairly big distance, but I guess if we will zoom out and we take the general, uh, you know, the general city of London as context, I guess that's not that big of a uh, situation, uh, that big of a distance, I guess. And lastly, the last interesting point I would like to mention is this is Ilford. This is a little bit to the east of London. This is East London, and he was sighted, Alex was sighted here in 2009, and I'm not really sure if this is the sighting that uh, Alex's mother quoted when she was interviewed as the one that she was not aware of, you know, when she found out in 2015 about sightings that happened in 2009. Nine. I did find it pretty inter like pretty fascinating how she was not aware of them. The only reason she would not be aware of them, and she did speak to the law enforcement, so it's not like she never had contact with law enforcement. I guess they just never brought it up to her. And this got me thinking, why? And I think maybe there's a good chance this is done due to law enforcement trying to keep this close to the West. I'm not really sure, but, you know, that's just the general gist of what we have on the map. I hope this, like, gives a better understanding of the general, you know, at least picture from the map perspective. Looking at the pictures of Alex slowly, right, I believe this one that we can see right now on the screen, and uh, for everyone who's watching this on the YouTube channel, you could always take a quick glance. I believe this one was... The one that was uh, shown the most uh, in media, especially, I think I would say I ran into this one a lot uh, during my research. I want to quickly flip through some other ones. I think this is that EFIT, uh, age progression uh, photograph uh, that depicts what Alex would be looking like in his late 20s. Um, I guess this one is if he had similar glasses it, uh, as he was seen wearing this earlier one. Um, some other ones would be uh, this one in particular. The one that we're watching, Alex does not look very happy in this one. This one has an interesting backstory, I believe, because I think this is a mug shot. Uh, and you won't see this brought up. I only kind of got a hint because I read the Reddit comments that suggested this and uh, it does look like a mugshot as well and you know the interesting fact here is that when we go to missing people you know missingpeople.com it's an organ organization I believe it was it's uh, mainly for missing uh, people within England they actually use it as uh, you know, as the most relevant picture of him. So I would actually think that this picture where he's uh, not being super happy, maybe this is the picture from that accident when he was driving a vehicle, even though he was underage. Maybe this is the picture that was taken during that stop. I'm not really certain. Um, but it is interesting, so I would probably argue that this picture that we're looking at, the one where he's super young and wearing those eyeglasses, I probably think this was taken maybe sometime before his actual disappearance. Maybe this was taken a few years prior, because he does look younger. He doesn't look like he's uh, close to getting, close to becoming 17, I'm sorry, but if we would flip to his uh, alleged mugshot image, yeah, this looks like a kid who's about to turn 17, doesn't look all that happy. You know, these are the comparison uh, images. And I feel like uh, this is another image. I feel like they even made the E fit in accordance to his mugshot image. Um, does look fairly similar to me. I would also like to remind everyone that Alex was five foot five in the height, 
which is not that tall for a male. He also had strikingly blue eyes. This is the quote I've seen thrown out there in the media. And I was thinking these characteristics, as, and as I'm looking at some of his pictures, yeah, he does have a face, or at least uh, when I look at his picture, I think it's a face that would be easy to recognize if you guys know what I'm trying to say here. So for instance, I'm trying to think of it from the perspective of his image being pasted upon 13.5 million milk cartons would, if he was really missing or if he had ran away, it, like how likely is it that his face, which is a fairly recognizable face as we can see, um, wouldn't generate any leads, right? I feel like there would be a lot of leads because maybe even though if he's not the one, if, if the sighting is false, let me put it this way, if the sighting is of someone else, I, I still think a, a, a good amount of sightings would have to be generated. And it just got me thinking, if he was really on 13.5 million cartons, uh, milk cartons, why is this case such uh, has such a low profile? Because it does seem to me like, you know, that's a that's a lot of mill cases, right? Mill cartons, right? The fact that uh, sometime before his disappearance, uh, and I believe this was on July eleventh, two thousand and eight. And let's remember, he goes missing on August second, and this is happening on July. Uh, sorry, July 11th, so not even a month before his disappearance, he was stopped by police after driving the vehicle, some sort of a vehicle, as he was underage. I don't think you can drive cars when you're 16 in the UK, and he was due to go to court, so obviously some uh, speculation was that maybe in order to avoid the court appearance uh, he decided to run away i personally find that fairly unlikely alex was just two days away from his 17th birthday i did spend a little a little time thinking about this does this actually in some way connect to the disappearance or not like the fact that he was going to turn 17 in just a few days. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, there are so many missing details in this case, and we really, and I did spend like a good chunk of time trying to gather as much information as I can on Alex's disappearance case, and I actually can't really tell if this had anything to do with his disappearance, like the, the fact that he was turning 17 in a few days. Because we don't really even know who he's staying with, where exactly he's staying, um, what is he doing. We don't know any of these things. Uh, it makes it very hard for us to gauge what's really happening in this case. Uh, you know what I mean? It seems like there's a lot of missing uh, puzzle pieces here. The whole um, line of thinking that Alex had little money with him and he did not have any other clothes apart uh, from the ones that he was already wearing, as well as him not having the passport with him, um, just his mobile phone. Uh, well, firstly, I would like, I, I definitely doubt, uh, or I feel like it's a red herring, the, the little money thing and the clothing thing. So um, I'm gonna, soon bring up a few uh you know sources that kind of states that uh, alex was already living uh, with some other people for a month at this point so how would we even know what kind of money he has or what kind of clothes he has so this uh clothing and money thing is completely um it, it's a red herring in my opinion now regarding the passport so i would assume he left the passport at his mother's uh, place at that point um, once again a 16 year old uh, probably doesn't care that much about his passport I certainly didn't care about my passport 
So I think it's fairly normal for him to leave the passport. I don't think there's anything suspicious happening right there. Um, the fact that the mobile phone stopped connecting shortly after he went missing. Well, once again, I think that kind of can take us into many different scenarios. Why would a phone stop functioning? I mean, it could just... I mean, if he went missing and the phone stopped functioning, that would mean that if this was a runaway case, he probably got rid of the phone because it would not stop functioning or like it would not, it, it would, the call would at least connect, right? Um, also, there could have been foul play involved and the phone got either destroyed or it was left somewhere, ditched somewhere and just, um, you know, ran out of battery power. Another line of thinking would be that there was some sort of an accident here. And maybe due to this accident, the phone got either destroyed or maybe it, you know, it got submerged into water. Um, there's multiple scenarios. So once again, the the phone, uh, the reason, the fact that the phone stopped functioning uh, shortly after his disappearance, I don't really think we can really overanalyze that too much, as I don't think it will provide us any significant. Uh, information or ideas unless someone in the audience members already have some thoughts about it I would welcome everyone to leave your thoughts and share what you think that you know just in general share your thoughts about the case now let's remember that Alex slowly went missing as he was uh, allegedly going back home from Edmonton to Islington and uh, I think it's worth talking about the fact that it was stated in the media that Alex was not captured on any of the CCTV footage that was looked at by law enforcement. And I think it's worth considering uh, the fact that London has a lot of cameras. And I'm looking at uh, Edmonton. Obviously, I would love to know where he was staying at. And because it's really just a, a shot in the dark here. We don't really know the address or anything like that. So we don't really know. Uh, police probably know. Police definitely know. But we don't really know where exactly law enforcement was looking at. So uh, no CCTV footage was found that would depict him. And as that annoying lady from that other YouTube channel, right? <laughs> as she said, she doesn't believe that law enforcement took the time to find him. Uh, and yeah, I kind of agree with her. Like, I mean, would you uh, spend so much time like shooting in the dark? Like, where is he? I mean, I don't know. Like, th that's the thing. I'm not a CCTV expert here, so I'm not going to speculate too much into that. But um, it is interesting because let's look at Andrew Gosden's case. Andrew went missing... Uh, around the same time, right, in a fairly similar, like, place, I guess. I mean, King's Cross uh, Railway Station, uh, they picked him up. Uh, there are CCTV footage of him, but we don't have any of Alex slowly. Then again, I guess in King, in Andrew Gosden's case, uh, law enforcement probably already knew where to look for, for that footage, right? Because... Uh, I believe in Andrew Gosden's case, um, it was reported by one of the employees of the railway station back in Doncaster or wherever um, Andrew went missing from, I can't recall at this point. Uh, so they already knew wh what to expect and which like CCTV footages to review, I would assume. But maybe in the case of Alex Slowly, we just really don't know where he strolled off, um, you know, so... It's anyone's guess at, at this point in regards to the CCTV, at least. I would like to once again share the screen, I guess, on the YouTube channel for everyone for the next interesting point here. So um, remember when I said in the introduction of this case that um, the retired central image, the head of the a retired head of the police central image unit, Mick Neville, he actually drew comparisons between uh, Alex's case and Andrew's case. Uh, back in 2006, 
17 and I believe this was maybe one of the I guess I would call them cataclysts uh, to I guess connect these two cases even though I personally believe they're definitely not connected like they don't look anything like that to me and I kind of had a suspicious thought that maybe this is due to Mick Neville trying to promote his post career business so this guy Mick Neville he has a uh, Neville Forensics Recognition LTD which is a company I'm not really certain what they do maybe it's like some sort of a CCTV consultant uh, enterprise they consult uh, you know they consult businesses regarding security and and then CCTV right and they have some videos about special recognizers let's you need joining us now are Dr. Josh Davis and Detective Chief Inspector Mick Neville to tell so yeah so this guy right here for everyone who's like looking at what we're uh looking at, at the YouTube channel I'm sorry this is this guy right here is Mick Neville I kind of strongly suspect that he made this quote just to promote his business I could be completely wrong but given the certain details that I will still talk about um, that I'm certain police was also well well aware of and if they are correct then uh, this guy would be full of shit to be honest um, yeah anyways I'm not gonna get into too much more about him and I guess I'll just uh, flip to some other interesting things here something else uh, interesting that I've ran into during my research I, I ran across this Huffington Post article I'm also sharing it right now on the screen right and it's it just basically I guess um, some, some article that they wrote about missing uh, people from UK and it's in connection to I guess Madeleine McCann's anniversary which Oddly enough, also happened around the same time that Andrew and uh, Alex disappeared as well. Um, I believe uh, Madeleine McCann disappeared sometime in 2007, if, if my memory is correct here. And, you know, I was scrolling through these articles because I knew that um, Alex Slowly was mentioned here. And this is Alex Slowly right here. I actually never seen this picture. I'm not even sure if this is Alex. I would assume this is probably Alex, but this doesn't look like anything like the Alex that we've seen from the mug shot this doesn't look like the same kid at all right but I I saw that this article had something about Alex and I was interested to maybe find out more about what it what was said in here because um, when you look up Alex slowly online you won't really find much information regarding his disappearance um the interesting the very very intriguing Thing was right here guys if I can just highlight this right he right here I'm just gonna read uh, an article where um, Alex is I'm just gonna read from this article where Alex's mother had a few uh, few interesting quotes here so she said in respect to the police they didn't start looking for Alex until 2010 and he went missing in 2008 back in 2014 I spoke to my MP Jeremy Corbyn because he lives just around the corner from my house and I said to him do you remember and he said of course I do and uh, he wrote a letter I guess Jer Jeremy Corbyn himself wrote a letter to the police and they started investigating again I've now got an officer, Pam, who is looking into it now. She keeps up. She keeps us updated. Uh, yeah, and, you know, Alex rubbed his sisters up the wrong way, but he was polite. He was a very good man, very good at math. He liked smelling good. He liked having his hair cut regularly. He liked dressing smart. He liked his food. He didn't like cheese, but he did pizza. He was always a polite boy and. That's what people taught and that's what stayed with them you know and uh, the missing uh, people score on Britain's Got Talent has made a lot of people think about Alex and contact me there are people that have thought he has been found 
and they say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's still not found. For me, that is uh, the motivation to think there is hope that someone might see him when I do an appeal. And I guess that's the right mindset, right? Once again, I think the guy's dead and I'll, I'll, I'll soon explain why. I know I've been teasing this for so long. I'm just trying to follow the structure that I have. So it's coming up, guys. I promise. This big this big thing about Alex slowly, the, the you know, uh, crack, cracking open the case. We're coming up soon one of the things that really hinder our own investigative abilities as i guess internet web sleuths uh, regarding this case is the fact that we do not have a detailed map or actually any of the locations available online um so we don't really know where he was living where his mother is living I have heard roughly somewhere that he was apparently heading towards some sort of a bus station in order to go back home. Um, but we don't even know which bus station this was. So we don't know anything. So that definitely makes uh, it a lot harder for us to speculate on what could have happened to him. Also, I would like to say that there is no information about the timeline of the days leading up to his disappearance. We only know that he was staying at a friend's house in Edmonton. That's just about it. And, um, you know, uh, um, uh, I see that a comment on a Reddit post suggests that Alex was supposed to have been going to or waiting at a bus stop having left the friend's house. Once again, I've, I didn't run into this. Like, this is the only time I run into this uh, bus stop being mentioned, only in Reddit, so I'm not really sure if we can take it. Uh, for, you know, we have to take it for, for what it's worth, uh, I guess. You know, one interesting um, comment on Reddit kind of gave me also a, a, a different perspective on this case. And they mentioned that back... In 2008, when Alex disappeared, it was actually legal to leave home in the UK. So Alex's disappearance was probably treated as a missing adult case. Now, I think, and also this comment, commenter thinks as well, that now a missing 16-year-old in the UK would be treated as a missing children, a child, but back in 2008 this case could have been potentially treated as a missing adults case. And maybe this could actually explain why we don't have uh, that much, you know, media coverage or let's say attention or even from the uh, police, let's say from uh, law enforcement, there isn't that much, I guess, at least from what we can see, we probably think that there's not as much effort being put towards Alex's disappearance as there is, uh, when, like, you know, into the disappearance of An Andrew Gosden. Maybe this kind of, you know, explains that. Also on Reddit, I found a comment from the user named Nonsentanios, a weird name for sure, and... The comment is pretty interesting. They stated that uh, this is the comment. There, uh, well, the first comment was uh, of the you know the big comment thread was I've never heard of Alex before. Going to read up on him, and you know this this user that I've just mentioned said in response to this comment, there isn't much. I've wrote the wiki, and it took me three tries to get it verified as he was deemed to be too unimportant and later on in this comment thread the same user said there wasn't much media coverage of alex so gathering enough info for the article to meet the notability standards was hard not all missing persons cases are notable and uh yeah i i kind of agree here because i also had a pretty hard time trying to find any information regarding alex slowly's disappearance and now finally we're at the point where i'm gonna actually explain what's happening here uh sorry guys it took a while but this is the thing that kind of broke the case for me personally and i feel like this is very credible i don't know i i don't know if this is cred a credible source but if this is a credible source then this kind of paints a completely different 
picture in the Alex Slowly's disappearance. So I was going through Reddit and I found another comment that was like very fascinating. It was uh, from a user named Bambi Woods fan, right? And this is the comment. I'm going to read it, read the entirety of it, because I know it's very important. And I know that the people that are listening to this on the apps, they might miss it. So here, here I go. Um, the comment goes, without being disrespectful to anybody's memory, I knew Alex. We went to the same school for a while. We had mutual friends. I would be extremely surprised if there was any link uh, bet uh, link between Andrew Gosden and Alex Slowly. Um, I'll probably delete this later, but I really don't want to paint him in a bad light because he was a nice guy. But he had fallen quite heavily into drugs and with a gang crowd around the time he went missing. He'd stopped going to school. He'd been arrested and in juvenile court for drug crimes. He wasn't living with his mom because of his behavior. He, the friend's house that he went missing from, uh, went missing walking home from, he'd been living there for months. There were loads of rumors about him having huge drug debts and paying them off by being sent to other parts of the country to deal for a gang. I suppose these days people would call it county lines. The passport style picture of Alex on the missing people website, it's a mugshot from one of his arrests. So this means multiple arrests. The other one of him looking shy and skinny in the blue shirt looks years old. He looked nothing like that at the time I last saw him. The place he was staying, the friend's house, was a total crack den. The friend's brother, Sion, was on trial for murder in 2012 when he was apparently involved in a guy being shot. He was found not guilty but clearly was hugely involved in the London fields. He's been in and out of prison for years. His friend also joined, is also in prison. Now, too, last I heard, London fields have been linked to ton tons of violence and murders over the years. I think London fields probably is like a gang, I assume. Um, continuing on with the comment, my first point is that it's way more likely Alex disappearing is linked to all the gang stuff that goes around here. If somebody had tried to snatch Alex, I can guarantee it would not have ended well for them. As far as I can tell, despite having been quite clever, he was the exact opposite of Andrew. Loads of mates, loads of parties, always out of the house, could generally take care of himself and you probably wouldn't want to mess with him. I'm not saying any of this is to criticize Alex, I liked him, but the truth is his life had clearly, completely gone off the rails. My second point is, knowing all of this, it makes me wonder what else the police know about Andrew's case, which they haven't shared with the general public. All of this Alex stuff is common knowledge locally, and the police are definitely aware, but has never been officially released by the police, as far as I can tell. Okay, so that was definitely a bizarre turn of events. Um, I'm so glad I ran into Bambi Woods fan, and um, I've read about this a comment because if I haven't had this perspective that was provided by Bambi Woods fan, um, we would probably not know any of, uh, any of these uh, potential gang related things because if this is already like gang related, I mean hell yeah he probably disappeared because of gang violence and if he was selling drugs and was known to sell drugs and he disappeared, um, uh, as he was living with like people in a crack den, uh, that is the quote from Bambi Woods fan, 
you know, we can see it's right now on the shared screen. The place he was staying, the friend's house was a total crack den. I mean, of course, and one of the people that he was living with was subsequently apparently uh, on trial for murder in 2012. I mean, for sure, for sure. Like, if this is a real thing, I'm almost like 100% thinking that this has has to be some sort of a gang related murder which in par would probably make the connection between the two um people you know what i mean we can actually jump to some comparison pictures uh between um you know alex and andrew i think it's non realistic you know what i mean uh it's probably not a real connection right here now one thing that i was thinking guys should i actually try to get a hold of bambi woods fan and try to maybe arrange an interview with this person i know it's a very slim chance that this will probably happen but i'm really thinking about sending this person a message and i'll just probably ask them for an interview what do you think guys should i do it and um would you like to know this information and if so maybe you have some questions that i could like ask him maybe he won't even answer the request for an interview but perhaps we could get this person to answer some of our questions i would like to know more about um his background and i would like to see some proof that this person is actually someone that knew alex but i strongly suspect that this might be the case and he this person wasn't really active on reddit there aren't any um uh, there aren't a lot of uh you know there's only two comments i believe and and this is another comment uh, this is another uh, comment made by the same user that i think it's worth reading out loud as well so the same person the same uh bambi woods fan has left another comment and i'm just gonna read it out real quickly um the completely well it starts off completely agree because uh, they are because this person is agreeing with someone else um, and they they continue there's also likely to even be things which have been kept from his parents so from alex's parents or things his parents may suspect but not want to put out there publicly for example i know alex's mom has stayed very quiet on the circumstances but before he disappeared she used to be really good friends with the mother of the friend alex had been living with after alex disappeared his mom and this woman had a huge falling out and alex's mom completely cut ties with her i don't know exactly why it happened but i've heard the i've heard she thinks that everyone from the house knows more than they've let on obviously you can't go around accusing people publicly as it may compromise future prosecutions so it's possible andrew's parents have similar suspicions behind closed doors but haven't been public with them and this makes me very curious what bambi woods fan is referring to who are the who is this mysterious family that alex was living with um soon before he went missing this is where this is a, an interesting line of query i'm definitely sending this person a, a, a message trying to get a hold of this person see what else might we uncover on the podcast i think it's a good time for us to jump to the theories um before we do that i quickly want to uh, give my take about the whole Andrew Gosden connection and whether there is a connection between Andrew Gosden uh, and uh, Alex slowly and I think there is no connection I mean it happened sure it happened in London but you know apparently Andrew was you know he went missing somewhere around I guess the King's Cross railway station we didn't we don't even know if um uh if alex even made it 
anywhere near to that location because Edmonton is a little bit down uh, up south up north I'm sorry so I will say that the connection between Andrew and Alex I wouldn't put too much weight towards it uh, I found absolutely nothing connecting these two cases if uh, anyone once again has other opinions please leave that in the comment section of our YouTube channel I think that's the easiest platform to get a hold of me and uh, leave your thoughts right there um, I would also like to jump to the theories at this point so I guess I just fleshed out a handful of theories that come to my mind and um, essentially one of the theories is that he potentially ran away and uh, I guess I can give my take a little bit here so um, the I guess cons uh, that work against this theory is that Alex had little money and no clothes with him. Uh, this makes the runaway theory less likely, even though I don't think he ran away. I, st I think this point is like nonsensical. Once again, we don't really focus on the, on the clothes and the money because he wasn't even living with the mother. So who knows what he actually had? Um, also during my research, I didn't find anything suggesting that Alex would have wanted to run away. It seems that Alex was pretty close with his sister, the one named Latina. So that makes this theory even less likely. Also, Alex's picture appeared on millions of milk cartons throughout England. I'm not sure how effective these milk carton campaigns are. However, I think there is a good chance that someone would have recognized Alex if he had been a runaway, but since they didn't, I don't think that Alex lived long after his initial disappearance. I think that Alex's this appear Alex's appearance was pretty unique. Uh, even from his picture, we can tell that he has a very he has very unique blue eyes. This kind of unique characteristic would allow people to identify him more easily if he indeed ran away. So another con in this theory. Um, also, Alex's mother does not think that her son is currently living under a new identity or even abroad. Her quote is, quote, he didn't have a passport with him to go off and get a new identity. It's hard. I don't know where he is, end quote. So the mother also doesn't think that Alex is a runaway. Alex had been stopped by police after driving a vehicle and rage and was due to go to court. This seemingly very important detail to the case has not been reported anywhere besides the Islington Tribune one year, one year after his disappearance. I'm not sure if Alex would have ran away to avoid an appearance to court, but it's worth considering this theory as well. Uh, there was a possible sighting of Alex in Ilford, where he had friends, however it has never been confirmed, so we don't really know if that was Alex in Ilford in 2009, one year later. Um, Alex's mother, Nerissa, was actually shocked to find out that the London police had received multiple sightings from 2009, and she has never been informed about them. So there were multiple sightings of Alex. Um, but once again, I think none of them actually, you know, came to anything. And then we have the foul play theory, which I think is way more likely after the latest revelations in this case. Um, so Alex had a phone with him, but it stopped ringing when he went missing. There are multiple scenarios that could explain this. He could have gotten rid of the phone himself, someone could have stolen it if he met with foul play or even perhaps this was some sort of an accident and the phone got somehow destroyed or became non-operational one way or another. This doesn't entail that he lived long after. I believe the fact that his phone stopped working or receiving or even, you know, it was, a, it was impossible to connect to his phone. I think this probably means that, you know, he probably was not operational as well, if you know what I mean. Once again, nothing is known about the friends or friend that Alex was staying over at. It's a shame because they were essentially the last people to have seen him. Um, if 
the Redditor that I think to have an interview potentially with is correct, um, then these people would probably be gang members, drug dealers, you know what I mean? Uh, definitely dangerous individuals. Um, I think if I could get their names or some more information, I could probably assess this thing better. But I kind of do lean towards the fact that the Redditor is correct because it seemed like a genuine comment. I'm like, do you think that this this is probably what happened to Alex? Uh, you know, some gang stuff. And it didn't turn out good. Um, and yeah, if the comment from someone who allegedly knew Alex, you know, that commenter is true, I would highly lean towards foul play. In this case, there are plenty of ways to die when you are connected to drugs, gangs, and living with violent individuals. So, yeah, I guess this is where the theories kind of end. I had the accident theory in here as well but i mean during my research i found nothing to suggest a potential accident in this case so i'm gonna rule that one out as well so um just to conclude the show i would probably say yeah at this point i'm definitely leaning towards foul play and alex slowly's disappearance but guys leave your i guess thoughts in the comment section what do you think about you know this week's episode what are your thoughts regarding the disappearance of alex slowly have you heard about this case um definitely please suggest pointers or tips for the format because for the foreseeable future i intend on doing the show solely alone um this definitely opens up new opportunities for me to do the show more efficiently the sh i can do the research the way I want to do it, I could really like dig down on some things. And as we can see, the podcast is not even that long. Um, and I feel like the quality of the research has been improved. So let, let me know, guys, what do you think about what's happening with this podcast? Very sorry about last week, but we will catch you on the next week's show for sure. I'm not sure about what, not sure how the podcast will change, uh, from this week to the next week, I guess you'll just have to find out. Until then, please stay safe and enjoy the rest of the week. I'll see you soon, guys. Peace out.